I'm Dale Steinberg, President and CEO of Planned Parenthood Southeastern Pennsylvania. Glad to be here, but sorry for the reason why. But first and foremost, let's be clear, abortion is still safe and legal. Planned Parenthood Southeastern Pennsylvania is still providing abortion care. But the leaked opinion from the Supreme Court is a gut-wrenching blow to our freedoms. This decision is not just about overturning Roe, but it's also the unprecedented withdrawal of a constitutional right. As abortion providers, educators, and activists, Planned Parenthood Southeastern Pennsylvania stands in outrage with everyone who is hurting from this news, and our thoughts are with all of those who already suffer the harm caused by the ongoing assault on reproductive freedoms. Since September 1st last year, we've seen the real life impact of a restrictive and unconstitutional ban play out in Texas on those who don't have the financial resources and support that they need to travel out of state to attain an abortion. We are in a crisis moment, make, make no mistake about it. The threat is not hypothetical. The courts clearly seems prepared to end the constitutional right to abortion. This outcome is as dangerous as it is unprecedented and will open the floodgates for states across the country to ban abortion. The consequences of this impending SCOTUS decision will be swift, widespread, severe, and devastating for communities nationwide. Overturning Roe versus Wade means 36 states are likely to ban abortions, including 13 states with trigger laws that would immediately go into effect. That means 36 million women and people who can become pregnant, pregnant could soon lose power over their own bodies and their own lives. The goal for the anti-abortion movement was made clear last week. They actually want to pass a nationwide abortion ban that would block abortion access in every state of this country. In Pennsylvania, anti-abortion legislators have introduced Senate Bill 956, the so-called no, right no Right to Abortion Constitutional Amendment, which if passed would pave the way for abortion to be banned outright in Pennsylvania as early as next year. We are fighting to ensure that everyone has the power to control their own bodies, lives, and futures. We deserve elected officials at all levels of government and judges who believe that as well. No judge and no politician should ever block your personal medical decisions or set the course for your life. As Vice President Kamala Harris said yesterday, how dare they? So, in this difficult moment, what can we do? Channel your outrage into support of abortion access. Legislators and their constituents dedicated to protecting abortion access in Pennsylvania should contact the co-sponsors of Senate Bill 956 and voice their opposition to this heinous attack on Pennsylvania's right to abortion. Join us in Harrisburg on May 14th for a Bands Off Our Bodies Day of Action volunteer to help us support our frontline health care workers, engage our communities to fight for and protect access to sexual and reproductive health and rights. Tell your story. Sharing personal stories are our most powerful tool in helping people understand the real life impact of access to care. And later on, um, Julia's going to do just that. So, the need for abortion will not decrease in a post-Roe world. We all know that. People had abortions prior to Roe and will continue to need them after Roe. Devastating harm will fall hardest on those who already have the least access to resources. Donating to Planned Parenthood or local abortions fund like the Abortion Liberation Fund help our most marginalized communities who need this essential in times sensitive service. Together, we help people, regardless of income, race, zip code, immigration status, or insurance status, with the resources they need to get the care. You'll hear from Governor Wolf shortly, and I know he will continue his strong legacy of championing, championing 
sexual and reproductive health, including supporting our work to approve regulatory and policy requests that will eliminate unnecessary barriers. <coughs> We're here to provide resources and services. We believe your body is your own. You can tell I've been screaming for the last two days, right? You and only you should control your personal medical decisions. The Supreme Court leaked opinion has lit a fire across our country. It has galvanized us, and we will not allow our rights to be dismissed and dismantled, including a right we've had for nearly 50 years. Generations before us have fought tirelessly to gain and protect the rights we have today. Planned Parenthood will not back down. We are furious, we're on fire, and we are fighting back. And on that note, I introduce you to Governor Wolf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. So today, along with everybody standing behind me, I am very angry. I'm angry because today the right to bodily autonomy, a right that has been enshrined in law for more than a generation, is under attack. I am angry because the right to privacy in this nation is under attack. I am angry because the rights of women in this nation are under attack. And I am angry because the idea at the heart of American exceptionalism, the idea that I have agency over my own life is under attack. So I am angry today. And I know that I'm not the only one. Abortion is health care, and it must remain safe and legal. If the Supreme Court goes through with this ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade, it will put every American, put the right of every American to make their own private medical decisions in jeopardy. All of them. And that includes the right to choose an abortion. That is absolutely, positively un-American, and it's unacceptable. Because while Republican lawmakers, activists, and judges are trying to score cheap political points by rolling back Americans' rights, real people, real people are being hurt by anti-abortion policies. Barriers to abortion do not keep women or children safe. In reality, those barriers hurt the very people they're supposedly intended to protect. Abortion bans lead to worse health outcomes for pregnant people, for babies. They increase rates of maternal mortality, and they cause financial hardship that hurts families, that hurts our economy. The Turnaway study from the University of California at San, San Francisco showed that when a woman is denied an abortion, she is more likely to have serious health consequences. Pregnant people de denied an abortion are also more likely to remain stuck in an abusive relationship and more likely to experience economic insecurity. When a family that already has children is denied an abortion, those children are more likely to grow up in poverty. Let's be clear, barriers to abortion can force families into poverty and it can keep them there. Abortion is health care. We must make sure it remains safe and it remains legal. If the Supreme Court goes through with this ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade, it will put the right of every American to make their own private medical decisions into jeopardy. So again, this ruling is not just about preserving life. It's about exerting control. And I don't think it's possible to overemphasize the seismic shift this represents in America's approach to privacy, to personal autonomy, and to health care rights. Let's face it, Roe v. Wade has been the law of the land for nearly 50 years. More than a generation of Americans have grown up under its protection. They've grown up with the knowledge that America respects the right of each of its citizens to make private health care decisions. They've grown up with the right to plan their own reproductive future. And now, that right is being ripped away. Roe v. Wade is under attack, and so is the future of our nation. It's important for Pennsylvanians to know that the leak of this draft does not change anything today in Pennsylvania. An official ruling has not yet been made, and even if it is made, 
once it has been made. It's up to the states to change abortion laws. And here in Pennsylvania, we don't have any of the trigger laws that Dale talked about. We're not one of those 13 states that would limit abortion as soon as the official ruling is made. Abortion access in Pennsylvania will remain legal and safe as long as I am governor. But we need to be, we need to be clear. This is going to be a fight. There are plenty of right-wing extremists itching to put abortion bans in place right here in Pennsylvania. Dale talked about one of them. Year after year, right-wing politicians have pushed anti-choice, anti-abortion bills in Pennsylvania's General Assembly. I vowed to veto all of them, and I put my veto pen to work, this one, on three, all three of the anti-choice bills that did finally make it to my desk. And while I'm governor, I will continue to veto every anti-choice bill that does come to my desk. But we must do more to protect the rights of women in Pennsylvania and in every state across the country that does not have a governor willing to use the veto pen. A bill is before Congress right now that would protect the right to an abortion law under law called the Women's Health Protection Act. This bill would protect a person's right to continue or end a pregnancy. And I call on Congress to pass it immediately. We cannot let right-wing extremists roll back Americans' rights. We must stand united for a future where Pennsylvanians have the right to make their own health care decisions. Thank you. And now I'm going to turn it over to Julia Hendrickson. So in October of 2020, when I'd spent a few weeks feeling super nauseous and decided to take a pregnancy test, I looked down at the little line that need, I needed to mean no, but instead meant yes, and I knew it wasn't time for me to have children. I was wildly fortunate to be able to pursue a stellar education, but I graduated grad school right when the pandemic hit with fancy degrees, no job, and massive debt. It took me months of searching to find a job all while navigating unemployment and Medicaid under the stress of a global pandemic. I found out I was pregnant about two weeks before I was due to start my new job. The decision was a no-brainer to me. I have always known I want to have kids, but not then. Even without factors like the pandemic or my debt, it wasn't time. I'd spent my entire adult life up to that point pursuing an education I was passionate about, and I wanted to have time to build a career, so I got an abortion. I was able to make the appointments right then, it was at the Planned Parenthood on Locust Street. Um, I'd actually volunteered there in undergrad. The next available time was just a few days before I was set to start my new job, but I took it. It was the first Thursday of November, the same week as the 2020 presidential election. I'd be voting on the 3rd, going to my appointment on the 5th, and having my abortion on the 6th. It was a busy week. Voting then felt more essential. Abortion access wasn't on the ballot directly, but I felt it there in other ways. I often lose faith in our political system's ability to stand up for bodily autonomy in its many forms, but I still have hope that my voice matters, so I went. Then I waited a few days until my appointment while the country waited to hear the results of the election. Thursday came. My partner dropped me off. Uh, it was peak COVID, so we couldn't come inside. I had to walk by protesters, and again, because of COVID, there weren't any pa patient escorts there, so the walk was pretty lonely. I got inside, I checked in, and sat down. Uh, Jennifer Lopez's Made in Manhattan was playing on TV. Uh, once I saw other folks in the waiting room, I started to feel a little bit better. Some of the other people waiting looked like me, some didn't. Again, because of COVID, people were distancing, masked, and quiet, but there was still comfort in knowing that they were there. The appointment itself was quick. I was only six, week preg six weeks pregnant, and I opted for a medication abortion. The staff was so gentle and kind, and even though I was alone, it felt okay. I took the first pill in the doctor's office and was sent home with the rest, plus instructions and everything else I'd need. I had to wait until the next day before I take, take the rest, so I waited. The next day went fine. It wasn't comfortable, but it wasn't bad. I knew I could call the nurse hotline at any point. I had saltines and tea and Netflix. I mostly slept. It went okay. The next day, Saturday, I still had cramps and felt kind of crappy, but late that afternoon, some news outlets started declaring that Joe Biden had won the 2020 presidential election. My partner and I slowly walked around Center City. People were celebrating. I saw a future for myself and for my country. I never regretted getting my decision. 
I felt sad about it at times, but I knew it was right. And for me, luckily, it was easy. I knew a clinic nearby had appointments available, I had a credit card to foot the bill, and I didn't have other kids to worry about finding childcare for, and I had a supportive partner. Even if any, of, any one of those things weren't true, it likely still would have been easy for me. If there wasn't a clinic nearby, I could have driven or flown to one that was. I knew that I could rely on my network of friends and family to support me in any way they could. And if SCOTUS overturns Roe and Casey, and if I get pregnant and decide an abortion is the right choice again, I'll still be able to get one. Their decision makes my ability to choose harder than accessing medical care should be, but I'll always have that option. Many, many others won't. I refuse to play into the idea that any governing or legislative power has the right to dictate what I do with my own body. But that rejection comes with massive privilege. For me, the fight to, for access to abortion is for people who uh, can't take time off of work or school to come to an event like this, who can't afford an abortion, but more critically, can't afford to get pregnant either. The people who um, know it's the right choice for them, but who are being penalized and pushed back by laws stifling their ability to live freely. Those are the people that these laws hurt most, the people who are already most vulnerable in this unjust system. I hope that by sharing my story in some small way, it helps them. Thank you. And Senator Capoletti, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Julia, for being willing to share your story. I know Dale mentioned that stories are the most important tool we have, but sometimes it's really scary to stand up and talk about things that are so deeply personal and so unfortunately controversial. So I applaud you and your bravery. Thank you. I'm Senator Amanda Capaletti. I represent parts of Delaware and Montgomery counties, and I'm joined with a Representative Mary Jo Daly, who represents parts of Montgomery County. We are co-chairs of the Women's Health Caucus. It is a bicameral uh, group of legislators who believe in pro-choice legislation, who believe in the access to abortion care and reproductive health and all that that encompasses. We have been fighting from the beginning stages of the caucus to protect abortion care here in Pennsylvania. It's not been easy, it's not been fun, but we have never backed down. We have fought for things that improve the lives of families, women, women and childbearing individuals. And perhaps one of the best things that has happened has happened under Governor Wolf and we've been able to expand Medicaid care for postpartum individuals from 60 days to a year. But this Supreme Court ruling turns all of that back for us. States that have restrictive abortion legislation have the highest rates of mater maternal mortality uh, and um, morbidity. And here in Pennsylvania, we have high rates of maternal mortality and morbidity. If the legislature ever gets through more legislation that would restrict access, those numbers would go up. And in this country, we are the only industrialized nation that provides no supports for, for families, mothers, birthing people. And in fact, we are the only nation that has higher rates of maternal death now than they did 25 years ago. And that is a direct result of restrictive abortion legislation. Representative Daly and I are here to say that we will not go back. We stand steadfast in fighting for abortion access and reprodu reproductive health care. The Women's Health Caucus will continue to fight tooth and nail to make sure not only that that legislation doesn't pass, but that we put together good, solid legislation that does support families, that does support childbearing individuals and women and people who need additional supports and resources to make bodily autonomy decisions with their doctors and their family members, whomever they might be. We support you and we will ensure in anything that we do, that you're at the forefront of that legislation and that whatever happens, you will be able to make decisions about what your life looks like. Thank you so much for having me and I, it's an absolute pleasure to introduce Congresswoman Dean, a friend and fighter in this. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. My name's Madeline Dean. I'm Congresswoman for the 4th Congressional District of Pennsylvania. I am delighted on this appropriately cloudy day to stand here with all of you and all of the elected people behind me, the advocates behind me, uh, to share my outrage, my frustration, my utter horror in reading the draft opinion by Justice Alito. The holding of the, the opinion, make no doubt, is that American women are second-class citizens. We are second-class citizens if this would ever become the law of the land. It's not just we're sending it back to the states because we believe that's the constitutional thing to do. No, it is a ban on abortions for American women, and of course, we will have the biggest impact will be for women of color, for poorer women. The draft opinion is really showing us that a woman's privacy to her own health care decisions are being ripped away by an extreme politicized Supreme Court of the United States. What a horror that that institution would play into this politicized environment. And what does it mean? You've heard the argument about slippery slope. If Roe can be overturned, what's next? Gay marriage? Brown versus Board, Loving versus Virginia, Griswold, make no mistake, everything will be on the line with this extremist Supreme Court. They've already started chipping away very effectively at our voting rights. One of the lines that, I, uh, that stood out to me in this horror of a draft opinion by Justice Alito says, quote, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start, end quote. What I think is egregiously wrong is how Justice Alito and other Supreme Court justices egregiously misled the U.S. Senate and the American people from the start. Yeah. I wanted to share one personal story under the, the umbrella that may our past not be our future. Uh, my mother-in-law was a magnificent woman, Joan Walsh Canan born in the 1930s in Scranton, Pennsylvania, the sixth of six children born to her mother and father. But Joan never knew her own mother because her mother became pregnant after, when she was just a child, became pregnant with a seventh child. The doctor knew that the baby would be stillborn and warned that the mother might die in childbirth. But this was 1930s Scranton, and Catholic they were. That family had no choice. The mother had to take the, the fetus to term, and as you can imagine, the results were horrifying. The baby was stillborn. The mother died in childbirth. May our past not be our future. I have daughters-in-law. I have daughters-in-law. I have four grandchildren, three of whom are granddaughters. May our past not be their future. So I thank you, Governor Wolf, for standing in the breach. I thank you, Mrs. Wolf, for always fighting for women's rights. Uh, and I'm just honored to be with you, horrified by the reason. May, us, may we make sure that this draft opinion remains a draft and never comes to the light of day again. Thank you very much. I think I, think I have the great honor uh, of introducing Representative Joanna McClinton, an extraordinary fighter. Here she is. Thank you, Congresswoman. Good morning. I'm very glad that so many advocates, so many strong women who've already been impacted by the challenges we have navigating a health care system that isn't caring for us as it should, grateful to the governor who has made sure that Pennsylvania has not become Texas, despite every single attempt by our colleagues across the aisle who care about life. They say they care about life so much, they're not willing to protect our children in schools and do anything about guns. They care about life so much that they're not willing to pay for child care. They care about life so much we don't have pay equity. Hello. They care about life so much, but they don't seem to care about how we can pay for our child care. They care about life so much, but they have done nothing to ensure that women are equal footing with our men. They care about life, but it's just a joke. 
They care about control. They care about regulating our bodies. They care about making people make decisions that are even adverse to their own health. That's what they care about. But I'm so glad that from the federal representatives to our senators, to our governor, to our colleagues in the House, to our friends in city council, we're here collectively today to say it doesn't matter that they care about control because we're going to ensure they keep their hands off of our bodies. We're going to make sure. We're going to make sure that when we put people on the Supreme Court that they interpret the law, that they don't give us the law. That's yeah. why we are lawmakers. We went to Harrisburg and Washington to create laws. We didn't send anybody to the Supreme Court to make new laws. And that being said, it is important now more than it's ever been that all of us get on the exact same page. I know we're here on official business, but we know what we've got to do. I know we're here on official business, but we know what we've got to do. And that being said, we know what we've got to do. Now, welcome back our friend and the person who's ensured that Pennsylvania's never become Texas, Governor Wolf. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I, this is really great. Uh, would be happy to take questions. Governor, can you hear us from here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good? Oh, excellent. All right, Governor, you can hear us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just along that same line, you said that abortion will remain safe and legal while you are governor. Your term ends next year. Yeah. So what are you doing at this point, at this moment, to prepare for the possibility that someone will take your place who will not feel the same way? I, I think the, that's a great question, and the, the answer is elections have consequences. What I'm doing is working very hard to make sure a pro-choice governor becomes governor of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yes. 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 Is there any, are there any executive orders? Is there any legislation? Is there anything that you are doing, though, to prepare for the possibility that the person who takes your place is not the person yeah, who you want uh, to take your place? Yeah, listen, this is a democracy. And the way democracies work is, as long as I'm in power, I can do the things that the people in the Constitution give me the ability to do. What I can't do is put something into place for life. That's not the way a democracy works. The way a democracy works is we have to go out every four years and make sure we elect a Democratic, sorry, Governor Josh Shapiro, who is going to actually preserve the rights of women to make their own reproductive health care choices. possibility of a constitutional amendment going to the voters on this? Again, elections have consequences. That constitutional amendment, if it makes it through two successive uh, sessions, will be put before the people of Pennsylvania and they're going to have to vote. They have to vote to make sure that we retain the ability to direct our own lives here in Pennsylvania. They're going to have to make that choice. That's the way a democracy works. Let the legislature. Vote. Yeah, let's 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 vote. Uh, yeah. Let's vote. 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 <clears throat> Anything else? I'm All right. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, everybody. One, one, one moment. Oh, it's all right. Good to see you.